Jimmy Sims is a, a you know, trusted member of that bench. He's really been an anchor for them, but it's just having a horrific postseason. They need to get more from him. A guy that can continue to step in, kind of play that wing position, get them a couple minutes. And then there's Savon Mooney, who had a tremendous game five. He first sent his praises after the game, saying he was the unsung hero. And he really played wonderfully. But Kerr also admitted that, that Mooney isn't a guy who can play 35, 38 minutes. So it's going to be a lot of feet mail. Maybe we see some some Jonas Jarebko minutes in there. He came in in game five a little bit. So it's going to be a, a team effort. I wouldn't expect any of those guys to, to put up huge numbers, but they're going to have to kind of piece it together with the ran out. Talking to Colin ward Henniger here on the show, what is your personal confidence level that Steph Curry can be something close to the player he was pre-Kevin Durant? Uh, my confidence is high just from, from what I saw after Durant went out. And it's it's not as much that, you know, he's going to make a ton of shots or he's going to score 60 points or anything like that. But just having him as the focal point, the initiator of that offense, is at least going to give Houston a different look. It's been something that's seen, you know, consistently for the last few seasons, regular season and postseason included. And they're used to seeing Kevin Durant out there. And the Warriors beat Houston earlier this year without Kevin Durant. And I think it'll at least throw them a little bit of a different look. They'll have to decide whether they want to double team Curry, trap him off the pick, which then leaves Draymond Green in a position to be a playmaker, which we saw, you know, thousands of times during those first couple of, you know, seasons without Kevin Durant. So. It'll be interesting to see. I, I'm certainly confident that Curry is going to come out aggressive, but it's just going to be a matter of, of how many shots he's going to have to make. What do you make of James Harden at the end of some of these, these critical games, particularly the ones that have been on the road? Um, yeah, he's, he's great, obviously, in those games three and four to, to save their, their postseason. Uh, and I know he didn't take a lot of shots. I think he, he ended up taking one shot in the last eight minutes or something like that. Game five was, just, was not ideal, but... This is a Houston Rockets team that is predicated on a system, and they play their system no matter what, whether it's working or whether it's not. We saw it last year's Game 7 where they missed you know, a gajillion three-pointers in a row. They're not going to stop playing the way that they play. So if Harden is reading the plays and thinks that the best, I, best thing for the team to do is to pass to someone else or you know, throw a lob or keep swinging the ball, that's what he's going to do. I don't, I don't think he's one of those guys that's just going to take the ball into his hands. That being said, if, if the game comes down and they're losing and their season is on the line, I think you would live with the James Harden step back over pretty much anyone else in that team shooting the ball. I gotta be honest, I see it differently. I, I think it's absurd he wasn't more aggressive and didn't attack more. I, I mean, he looked to me, Colin, and you were there, I was watching on TV, he looked to me like a guy who didn't want to be there for the last four or five minutes. Yeah, it, I mean, it's weird. I, I, I don't see that in person. I, I, I'm kind of, you know, reading the game and seeing what's going on. I, to be honest, it wasn't even occurring to me that he hadn't shot in a while. And I think that's, a, you know, a testament to the way that the Rockets play and the way that they, they uh, their system works. Um, looking at it afterwards, it obviously looks a little jarring to see, you know, one of the best players in the entire world not shooting the ball at the end of the game. But, uh, you know, to your point, I think if it comes down to it at the end of game six, He's definitely going to have that in his mind, given all of his previous postseason critiques that he's endured, and uh, I don't think he'll go down without shooting this time. The Rockets are open as five and a half point favorites. They've moved to seven, seven and a half. That's a really big number. I mean, even with Durant out, that's a really big number. Do you expect a close game, Colin Ward Hanger from CBS Sports? Do you expect the Warriors win? A, a Rockets blowout? What, do you, what is your best hypothesis for what's going to happen tonight? I think it'll be a close game. I mean, all these games have been close. And what's different about this one is it's, it's almost like a, a game one. It's, it, you kind of throw out what's happened in, in the previous games in this series. You know, normally by the time you get this late in the series, you all know what everybody's going to do. But there's going to be so many adjustments to what the Warriors do on offense. Who they bring in off the bench? How the Rockets guard them now without Kevin Durant? It's, it's going to be a, a feeling out process. So I think that'll lead to a closer game. For the Rockets, I think it's key for them to come out and get a big lead. If they can, can get that home crowd behind them, kind of put the Warriors behind the eight ball a little bit. The, the Warriors, as we know, have that tendency to get a little, you know, overconfident or looking ahead, and they know they have that game seven at home. So I think if the Rockets can come out and get a big lead, the Warriors might have a chance to die a little bit. But I, I do expect it to be close. And Colin ward Henniger here on the program. Colin, what, what you've seen in the series, Kevin Durant's injury, has anything led you to adjust your expectation, your perspective, on how competitive Denver or Portland can be in the next round, whoever they face? 
I don't think so. I mean, obviously the Duran injury issue, just the Warriors do it, escape this. I, I still think they have enough to beat Denver or Portland just because of the talent disparity and the experience of being in the Western Conference Finals all those years and the NBA Finals all those years. Um, if Houston advances, I, I mean, I, they would be my favorite to come out of that series and possibly even win the whole thing. Well, obviously, Milwaukee or Toronto or Philly will have something to say about that. But I think Houston, just the way that they play the Warriors has been so good that if they see another team who's not as talented, I think it's going to give them even more confidence. So I think uh, either team will have a pretty good shot in the next round. All right, Colin, so who do you think, who do you think advances from this series? Do you... And I know it's, it's hard to know, but not just tonight's game. Moving on to the Western Conference Finals, if you had to put your finger on it, Warriors or Rockets? I'm going to go with the Warriors, and it might be a little biased just because I watched them all year. But this team has a, a level of, of confidence that I, I, I've never seen before in sports. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to cover this team the last few seasons. And, and they truly believe in their hearts that they are not going to lose. It's not a projection. Even today, 